one day it, I decided to respect God, to take God seriously and respect him. You can't say you love him if you don't first respect him. You can't love anybody you don't respect first. And if you respect him, you pick up your Bible. The first time the visionary saw the Blessed Mother in black, in tears, is when she said she was crying because the children no longer read the scriptures. Faith comes by hearing. How do you know what to do, what to follow, all the things that are expected of you if you don't even pick up the book and read it? You think Sunday's enough because they have first and second reading up there and the gospel and you think you got it covered. Half the time not listening. You must pick up that Bible. I keep it on the side of the bed so when I wake up I start the day out with wherever I'm supposed to read and read it. Pray on it. Grow in it. The word changes you interiorly. That's what does it. Please read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. It was hard to come by. A lot of people had to die horrible, heinous, insidious deaths to give you that word. Read your Bible. So you ask yourself, we all have many gifts our Lord saw fit to give us. I wonder what some of Lola's are. <laughs> Exhortation? <laughs> I tell you one thing, to my last breath, I hope that I have a voice. If they take my legs, I hope I have a voice so I can still exhort people to do the will of God. You know, we're here at these conferences for one thing, for you to re-examine yourselves regularly and save your souls. And you know, you may have, you already have your ticket to purgatory, and if you want to go, hey. And it's for sure, if you get there, you're guaranteed heaven, but whoa. <laughs> My thing is this, if we could all get together and just conscientiously focus, single-blindedly, seriously on being a disciple of our Lord and an apostle and say to ourselves, we want to be like one of the twelve. I say twelve because we had one added on. But I want to be one somebody that Jesus would say, follow me. And then, after Pentecost, entrust you with his church. This church means more to me than I have words to tell you. And probably that's why I'm here. I'm Charlie come lately. But I'm going to tell you something. I love the Catholic Church. I adore it. I know that some people, I, I asked about other denominations with the priests today, and they have, they have Holy Communion. I said, is that really Holy Communion they're having? No. You're the only one who gets Holy Communion. You're the only one who receives the body and blood of Christ. You are the only one who receives the true Eucharist. And San Antonio, I am glad to be here. I am so happy. I saw in the book how many places you have Eucharistic adoration. God bless you. So where was I? Oh yeah. I didn't, I, I, I got to go to Medjugorje and I got to climb Mount Krizhevek and Maria, one of the visionaries, took me into the room of apparition. And I got to talk to our Blessed Mother a little more. And I saw myself with her in a vision as a little, tiny, little naked baby. She had me in her arms with my little brown buns hanging over. <laughs> and I remember all I did was talk. 
I just say, oh, mommy, mommy, tell Jesus I'm sorry when I'm wrong and I'm sorry for my sins. And tell God this and tell Jesus that and tell so-and-so this. And, uh, she must not have heard a word she said to the visionaries because I never shut up. But when it was finished, Maria said, she blessed you. And I thought, at that time, I was not Catholic. That was God's way of saying, keep coming, young lady, keep coming. And now I'm in your church. And now I'm...